So, uh, you got me good, good little little brother? He's, amen, hallelujah. We're just checking out because we're going to later on have we, the, the Facebook thing's kind of really, I've had several churches tell me they're having trouble with it. And I, I don't know if that's intentional, but we're going to, we're going to go ahead and load it up this afternoon or something like that. But right now, let's, I want to just share with you this message God's given me. You know, when I talk about Facebook, it's not because I don't care about the people sitting in front of me. You know that, right? If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be up here. And uh, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be able to get anything out to them. Radio, we keep on hearing from different people that that are listening to our radio ministry. I, I'm... It just seems like every month or so I hear from somebody new that I've never met before that says, hey, I've been listening to your program for a long time, for a long time. And friends, I want you to know that this is not talking about Pastor Mike. This is talking about the fact that this is the voice of Church on the Hill, right? The radio ministry and the the TV thing we do on Monday evenings at 6 o'clock on the cable, cable system up in Bloomington. And every time we put video on, I'm, <laughs> I put video, I put a church video on uh, <clears throat> not only YouTube, I've got three pages on YouTube I put it on, or f- Facebook that I put it on, but I also put it on YouTube, and I also put it on Rumble, and there's a website called Getter, and I put it on there. So we, we're putting our videos, our church services out on a lot of places. You just pray that God will cause people to tune in and look at them, Okay. It's one thing to have them there, but it's another thing to, to know people are responding that, hey, I'm watching your program. And we get some of that, but a lot of times you don't know for sure for a while just how many people you're really reaching. But, but you know, the, the thing is, it's like casting your net out, right? Cast your bread upon many waters, and soon it will, one of these days, it'll come back to you, right? So that's what we're doing. We're casting the bread upon many waters. So I want to talk to you today about his glory and his goodness. Amen. I was talking to somebody earlier this week, and we were just having a, a Jesus discussion, and this kind of came to my thoughts when we were talking about it. I pray that you will uh, <clears throat> be blessed by this word, that it's going to speak to your heart, and uh, we'll understand. When we use terms like glory, you think that's an ethereal sort of um, uh, what what would you say, a theoretical sort of a term, and it's it's not something that you really know what glory is. What's glory? What's that mean? Well, we give glory to God when we, when we praise and worship Him. But also, amen, <clears throat> but also when He shows up and manifests His power and His presence, that's His glory. You know, when Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train fills the temple in Isaiah chapter 6, and he said, uh, you know, it, it, it moved him. He said, I'm a man of unclean, unclean lips. He says, woe is me. Woe is me because I've seen God in his glory. Seeing God in his glory. Friends, can you imagine what you're, have you ever tried to imagine what it's going to feel like? That song that was written years ago, you can, I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be on camera, but anyway, that's, <laughs> that's all right. We they like the back of your head. So anyway, <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, I had one uh, back there, and I forgot to bring it up with me. For some reason, some mornings you get a little dry. For you know, and uh, thank you, Lord. But <clears throat> Isaiah was in a situation where the king that he, uh, King Uzziah had died, and it was somebody that he was sort of used to having as his security, and the guy that he worked for, and the king of the kingdom died, and so God appeared to Isaiah to further strengthen in his mind the commission and who he was and who God was and his greatness. And <clears throat> when he saw God and his glory and his greatness, he humbled himself, and he fell before us and said, Lord, I'm a, I'm a sinful man. I, friends, when you first see uh, the, Jesus in his glory, now we'll be by this time in resurrected flesh, right? We'll be in our resurrected, glorified bodies when we actually first see him. 
But if he, if he was to just appear here right now with us in our mortal bodies, we would probably all fall on our faces and say, oh, my Lord, how can I look on anything so holy when I'm so, you know, unholy? And even though I'm born again and I have the righteousness of God in Christ as mine, and even though I am, you know, pursuit of holy life and holy living and living off the holy scriptures, uh, you know, when, I, when he just, if he just suddenly showed up here in his full glory, first of all, we'd probably all drop dead. But <laughs> because it's that powerful of a vision. You know, when John, who had walked with him for three years, had, had seen Jesus, and he was there at the foot of the cross when Jesus died that brutal, terrible death. Uh, and, and yet, he, when he was on the island of Patmos and Jesus appeared to him in the book of Revelation, you know, when he was writing that revelation down, he, uh, praise the Lord. When he was writing that revelation down, he said, he fell on his face, and Jesus had to say, get up on your feet, because he saw him with his face as white as snow and his hair really bright and brilliant and his eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet were like burnished brass and they had the golden sash across here, and so I began to see him a little bit in his glory. I've heard from people that have actually gone to heaven and come back. You know, people you can say, well, do you believe that stuff? Well, I, th I believe it from some of the people I've heard, Yeah. <laughs> Because just when they're telling it, it just quickens in my heart and says, well, that seems, sounds real to me. You know, and they talk about the, the, the glory of Jesus and when they see his face and what it's like for him to, for them to finally see him as he is. You know, the Bible tells us that we're going to see him as he is. We look to see him and because we'll be, we want to be with him because when we see him, we're going to see him as he is. The Bible says, that's First John 3. And so that's what we're looking forward to, isn't it? Amen. His glory is his, <coughs> his manifest presence when God is here. His glory is his manifest presence when God is here. God's here. God is here. God is here. God's in this room. Amen. Hallelujah. That's his glory. That's his manifest presence. And, you, and God's in the room and you say, oh, uh, I know God's here. You know, I've been in services before that, that the, the God so moved in such a powerful way that I was riding on the high of that for several days after that because it seemed like it seemed like when I walked out the door I was still floating on that whatever it was the Holy Ghost did all over me. Amen. And I want I want to want you to have that experience here. I want you to have that experience here, brother. Hallelujah. And I'm going to have that experience someday. I'm going to see Him. I'm going to see Him. Read Revelation three and four or four and five, and you'll see. What it's like to be around the throne of his grace and glory with hundreds of millions of saints and angels. Amen. Hundreds of millions. You think about it. Hallelujah. Praise God. His glory is his goodness. Let's read that opening scripture up there together. If you can get that for me. It says, now therefore I pray, this is Moses talking, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way, show me now your way, that I may know you and then I might find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. And God answered, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then a few verses down, he says, please show me your glory. How many of you had a taste of Jesus? Taste and see that the Lord is good, amen? A taste of his presence. He's touched me. We've been in here and he's touched us. Or we've been gathered around this altar praying for each other and all of a sudden with the, you can know the anointing just hit. Amen. Hallelujah. There's God. Amen. There's God flowing. We're like, we're like lightning, uh, conveying lightning back and forth. Uh, uh, you know, the current's jumping from me to you and uh, from you to me and us you know, back and forth. That, that flow of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise God. And so, and so we, we, we think about how that is. And he says, I want to know your way, Lord. He says, I pray I want to, if, if I have found grace, and I'm going to go, go over this particular scripture a little more in, in a minute. But what he had is he had an experience with God. He felt God at different times. He heard God. It's different to be an Old Testament believer when you're not really a, a, a walking temple of the Holy Ghost like we are now under the new covenant with Jesus in our hearts. But he had experienced God. But he says, guess what? In verse 18, he says, oh, there's got to be more. He says, Lord, all you did was whet my appetite and just make me hungry. Come on, God, give me more. 
Lord, you, I, I felt your touch, but God, I got to see something. I want to see you in your glory. Amen, right? I want to see him in his glory. I want to see him manifest his glory by healing sick bodies and delivering people, saving people, and uh, filling people with his Holy Spirit baptism. Amen. And uh, the gifts of the Spirit manifestation. How many of you want to see that? Amen. And, and he says, but please show me your glory. So I want to say it this way. The point I'm making here right now is that you may have had experience with God, and I'm sure you have, but how many of you want more? <laughs> You know, until I see him, until I see him with my eyes wide open, I, there's still more that I want to see. Amen. I can feel him sometimes. I can sort of visualize him, and I can sort of sense he's in the room. And, and, and I've had little mini visions of the Lord, just brief things, you know. But, but as far as if I can just look at him with my eyes wide open, whoa. I've been to the Grand Canyon. I've been to... All the junk they got at Disney World. <laughs> I've been to the several beaches and oceans and all that. We, I did mission a mission trip in South America, and uh, Linda and I stayed a week, or a few days on on at Puerto Vallarta on the west coast of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean. And we've seen a lot of things. You know, we've seen the mountains, east and west, and all of that. And we've flown over a lot of territory, looked down and seen all that stuff. You know, but but with all the impressive sights that we have seen. Nothing's going to impress you like when you see him. Amen. Oh, man, you're going to just say, I'm going to give glory to Jesus. I am not. I'm not going to just thank you for what you gave me. Thank you for what you made. I'm going to say thank you for you. Amen. Amen. Next, please. So what stirred up Moses? Oh, there you go. I forgot that. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Isn't that beautiful? Psalm 145.9. Let's go next, please. What stirred Moses to make this request? He, he hungered for more. He wanted the real, the powerful, the presence of God to actually show where he could see God. Amen. And he says here, uh, show me your way. So when you think of that, he said in verse 18, show me your glory. But before that, before he said, show me your glory, he said, show me your way. Right? So here it is. If I really want to know what his, his way means, I want to know his heart. I want to know what pleases him, right? I want to know what his agenda is for me. I want to know what makes him happy. I want to know what he, what he has in mind for my life. I want to know his way. So he, he got into that before he said, finally, show me your glory. But in verse 12, he says, see, you say to me, bring up this people. But you have not let me know whom will, who you will send with me. He wanted Aaron or somebody to go with him. He said, Lord, you told me you gave me a big job to do. I need some help. Friends, whenever you're a pastor or whatever you're doing, if you're trying to do a work for God, it, it, even when the congregation's not the biggest in the world, it's a big job. And God needs to give us helpers. Amen, right? And uh, so I, I thank God for all of you, every one of you that teaches a class or sings on the praise team or works on the church board or does anything like that, works back in the, in the, uh, in the sound booth and on the computer. I, work, I appreciate every one of you. And those of you who don't do those things, you have showed up and cleaned the church and other things that you have done or work, work the ladies' ministry or, or the men or whatever. And so we appreciate everything you've done because like Moses says, God, you've given me a big job to do. I need some help. Friends, every pastor is always looking for more helpers. And it's not because he wants to do nothing. I don't want to do nothing and let everybody else do it. No, it's just that if we get more helpers, then we can multiply our effectiveness, right? If you've got one person working, he can only do so much. If you've got 20 people working, you multiply the effect that we can have on the world in our community, right? Amen. And so that's what I'm looking for. He said, you told me to bring up this people, but I need some helpers. Then he said, you have said... Uh, I know you by name, and you also have found grace in my sight. He knows your name. That's another thing, friends. He knows your name. Yeah. You're not a stranger to him. You're not, hey, you. <laughs> he said, what's your name? I know we had a little issue during the Sunday school class today, kind of trying to remember names. <laughs> the thing about it is, is the Lord knows even every hair on your head, so he knows every, He knows everybody's name, right? And he says, uh, I know you by your name, and, and you found grace in my sight. So when God says to you, if God showed up to you and says, I know you by name, and you have found favor in my sight, 
Would you expect that to be the end of it? You'd have to say, then, therefore, what's coming next, right? If he knows your name and if you found favor in his sight, well, that's nice to know, but it's supposed to lead to something, right? Okay, God, what does that mean? That means I'm going to work through you, work in your life. I'm going to use you in powerful ways. I'm going to make you a, a light to the world, show my glory to the world. He says, you see, I've found grace in my sight. Now, therefore, I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me your way. So before he said, show me your glory, <clears throat> he said, show me your way. Why? That I may know that you, that I may know you. I want to know your ways, God, so that I can know you, right? Friends, I think if we'll just get back to basics so much of the time, it's going to be, going to be so much greater for us to, than, uh, okay, God, I got, I, I got my relationship with you. I'm, I'm saved, so what's next? What, what, what else can we do, God? I think the thing is, is you can never stop wanting to know him better in, deep, in a more deep way, right? In a broader, deeper way to know him. Amen. And so he says, I pray if I found grace, show me your way so that I may know you. And that I, might, that I may find grace in your sight. In other words, if I found grace in your sight, show me your way so that I can keep walking in that grace. Amen. Lord, if I found grace in your sight, show me your way so I can keep walking in that grace. Because I don't want to have any distance between me and you, Father. Between me and you, Jesus. And I don't want to back off from your grace. I want to be right in the middle of your grace. Amen, right? And so he says, show me your way that I may know and, fi uh, that I, and find grace in your sight. And consider that this nation is your people. Here it is. Lord, consider. You told me I got to go lead these people. Father, you tell me I'm going to pastor this church here. For God, remember, these are your people. That's what Moses was saying. He says, these are your people. Friends, anytime you stand up here to sing or to play an instrument or preach the word of God, stand up in front of people, you got to remember, you're not just my audience. We're not just each other's audience. No. We are heart to heart, soul to soul, communicating here, loving each other, part of the same body, amen, and, and sharing things. And the only reason why this platform is up a couple feet higher than where you're standing, sitting right now is this because of, so you can see people. But, you know, I, we, sometimes we go down there and preach. I don't do that very much for some reason, but a lot of people do. And with that, all I can say is that uh, it's just for visibility, not because anybody's above anybody, right? Amen. So he says, this is a big job, Lord. How in the world am I going to get the job done, and who are you going to give me as a helper? Next, please. We must have his presence. Look, uh, there's some key words and key phrases in this scripture you're looking at right now. And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. I want his presence to go with me. How many of you have ever had a time where you, you really felt God in your life, and then for a few days you hardly felt that God, you couldn't, uh, you, he sort of would let you feel as if he was absent. But it's not true, but that's when he's trying to help you to learn how to walk by faith. Amen? That God is not absent ever, but, but sometimes he'll help us to understand how we walk by faith and believe him no matter how we feel, right? I want to feel his presence, but if I don't feel his presence, I know he never lied. And he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody a little bit cold out there? I could bump it up, huh? Okay. I don't know what it is. I'm hot. A couple of you out there bundling, bundling up, so I'll bump it up a degree. <laughs> All right. Say, I ain't just thinking about me, okay? And he said, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. See, his presence brings rest. That's the reason why you want to try, ought to try to move into the pre presence of God. Praise Him. You know, he, the Bible says He inhabits the praises of His people, right? So if I want to sense His presence and His glory, one thing I've got to do, Psalm 22, and praise Him and He will inhabit my praises. And worship. He'll enter our, into our, our worship. You know, in Je uh, Hebrews chapter 2, I believe it is, it talks where Jesus is there among the people, and it says he's like leading the worship to the Father. He's leading us. Jesus is here helping us to worship the Father. 
Father, Son, Holy Ghost. We get all three of them here with us today. Amen. One sense or another, one way or another. Amen. And he says, I'll go with you and I'll give you rest. So with his, in his presence is rest. Then he said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. What he's saying is, God, I'm glad that you say this, but if you don't go, I ain't going either. Father, don't just send me. You got to go with me. Right? Friend, I want every one of you to know this. You need to pursue that and, and know that, that God... Uh, I'm glad that I'm going out here, but I'm glad that you're going with me because I wouldn't want to go there without you. Sometimes God sends you into challenging places, doesn't he? Whether it's a job where there's hardly any believers or it's a ministry in a, in a down and out part of town or something, whatever it is, or maybe a family gathering where you're the only Christian in the room. Things like that, he'll send you sometimes into dark places, but, the, but you have confidence to go because you know he's going with you, right? You know? You can go there and you can be, you can let him fill you up and make you who you're supposed to be and make you the influence. So what he says, and he, and, and he says, you know, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Do not bring us up from here. So he said, Lord, we ain't, we're not going to break camp unless you know, we know you're going with us. Friends, I'm not breaking camp unless I know I'm going with God, right? I'm going to say, Lord, come on. And, and you know, he wants us to know that he's got, that's what he wants to do. That's what he will do. But, but it's the fact that this was the desire of Moses' heart that he's saying that. You know, God doesn't plan to leave you or desert you, but he wants you to really want him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. You know, hunger and thirst after righteousness, and you'll be filled, right? And I'm not those that say, oh, yeah, I guess I like a little dose of religion. Those aren't, the people that want a little dose of Sunday morning religion aren't the ones that get a life full of God. They're not the, that's not who gets it. Because God says, okay, well, I'm just nickel and dime to you. I'm no big deal. So uh, I'll go spend my time, more of my time with somebody who really wants me there, right? So let's want him all the, all the time. He says, don't bring us up from here, for how then will it be known that, that your people and I have found grace in your sight except that you go with us? Friends, the thing that marks us different from everybody around us is that God is going with us, the presence of God. Sometimes have you ever gotten a conversation with an unbeliever or somebody in need and there you just sensed God came into your conversation, right? You, you sense like, oh, God, God's here. God's on us. God's in this exchange. You know, and that person, if they didn't know anything about that, they had to sense something. Even if they couldn't explain it, they had to sense something. When you talk, it's almost like God talking to me. I, I can almost see Jesus when you start talking about him. And that's because he goes with you and because you insist on living in the presence. I want to live in the presence of God. I want to live in the glorious presence of God. Amen. Every day of the week, amen. It says, uh, it said, if you don't go with us, he says, so your people and I need to know we found grace in your sight. And how can we know that and accept you go with us? And he says, so shall we be separate, your people and I, from all the people who are upon the face of the earth. That's what sets you and me apart, right? What sets you and me apart, friends, is the fact that we got God with us and God on us and, and, and God in us. Amen, right? That's what sets us apart. And you guys are weird. What's wrong with you religious freaky people? <laughs> well, you know, you know, I happen to just be mindful of the living God because he lives in me. And because I worship him and I have built up in my life, uh, my lifetime this awareness of when God is at hand. So I can really be listening, especially when I sense that God is at hand in a special way. And I think he wants to tell me something. Lord, what do you want to say? Right? Amen. So if you're living that kind of life, friends, you can't help but to make a difference in the world that you're, you're in. His presence is our confidence. His presence is our rest. All oh, these things are in that in that uh, in that scripture I just read to you. His presence is our confidence. His presence is our rest. His presence confirms His favor and grace. God's with me. He must be for me, right? His presence separates us from all other people, and so that's why we are peculiar people. <laughs> we covet His manifest presence. 
His presence is uh, the same things I just said. I guess I got it on there twice. Presence is our confidence. His presence is our rest. His presence confirms his favor and grace. His presence separates us from all others. Amen. Grace and favor. So the Lord said to Moses, I will also do this thing that you have spoken. For you have found uh, grace in my sight, and I know you by name. And this is kind of repeating some things that we've said before. And, and he said, please show me your glory. So God was kind of building this thing up uh, on the inside of Moses' floor. He had an expectation. Praise the Lord. I'd like to move, but I need to I want to stay in the camera. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> to praise God. Amen. So God is building up this expectation in your heart, right? When we sing and praise God and worship the Lord, you're just singing along here this morning like we did a few minutes ago, and you and the music sounded good and all that stuff, and you're beginning to sense God is really in it, talking to your heart, right? God's in the room. We're not just singing songs. We're actually worshiping the living God who is in the, in the house, in the room, right? So he's kind of building up this thing in you that says, wow, where's this thing going? Wow. Are we getting ready to approach the mountaintop? Are we going up to the highest place that I've ever been in my life? Who am I going to see him in a way I've never seen him before? And he says, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Friends, I want God to be on you in such a way that he builds up your expectation and he builds up your hunger and your thirst and you say, oh, God, more. Oh, God, more. Oh, God, more. More, more, God. Oh, God, more. In Jesus' name, show me your glory. Praise God. Friends, and I pray that that is your, and that when you're at home, I pray that when you're at home by yourself or driving down the street in, in your car or you're on the job, that you get a little piece of that wherever you go, right? We're here Sunday morning in a very friendly atmosphere where we uh, totally allow you to express your love for God and, and your pursuit of his presence. But you sometimes go to other places where it's not quite like this, and uh, uh, but you got to nurture that relationship with him so you always take a little piece of the presence of God. God's presence leads to his glory. His presence leads to his glory. When his glory is fully manifest in a powerful way, friends, healings happen, miracles happen, deliverance happen, salvations happen. Amen? The signs and wonders, all the great things that God, you know, the book of Acts has never been finished. We're still living it today. Amen? God's presence leads to his glory. Moses knew God's presence, and he wanted manifest glory. You know, when you say, show me your glory, well, you know, there's a lot of ways that you could express what that would look like. Part of it is just to see the, his work in the lives of people, but part of it is there's a, sometimes been a glow in the room, and it, you knew it was God, right? Sometimes there's been a glow in the room, and I, it's getting a little foggy, a little cloudy in there, and I... I think it's the glory presence of God. Shekinah is happening. Shekinah is happening in this room night right now. Oh, Shekinah, the glory of God is happening in this room right now. Hallelujah. And why is that? Why do we want that? So we can just get a tingle up our spine or say, I had a, a, a wonderful, highly religious experience. No. So that there's such a change in you that when you get out there, they can't kill that out of you. That when you get out in this world, that there's not enough, there's not enough bad stuff going on to put out your fire. There's not enough, uh, there's not enough out there of pain and problems to make you forget the greatness and the goodness of your God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's, Moses asked for glory, and God gave him goodness. Let's read that. He, his goodness is his glory. Friends, I'm going to give you some answers here. Then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. He said, show me your glory. And he said, I'll show you my goodness. Okay. Show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And, uh, and he says, I will make my goodness pass before you. What's that mean? You know, when he said, show me your glory, well, if you, when we read a little further, you see what happened was that God put him in a place where he could see part of him, you know, his back and all that stuff. And, and so it was a, a visible manifestation. And so you say, okay, well, I guess that's goodness. But, uh, but he says, I'll make my goodness pass before you, proclaim them. So what he's saying is, I'm going to proclaim 
the, the power in, in my covenant name, that I am your Jehovah Jireh, that I am your Jehovah Tidkin righteousness, that I am your Jehovah Rapha, and, and all the other covenant names of God in the Old Testament that uh, talk about the fact of, of his promises that he made to people, that he, that he loves and trusts, his, all his various covenants. And he says, uh, I will, uh, he's going to express to us the name of the Lord. But he said, you cannot see my face. See, this is what I was talking to you about a while ago. If Jesus came here and just let us see him exactly like he really is in heaven, it'd blow us away. We might have to just leave our bodies behind and just go follow him back to heaven and leave a bunch of bodies down in this room because <laughs> the big one, <laughs> you know. He said, you can't see my face or no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, here is a place by me. Look at that. I want you to, uh, that, phrase, that phrase meant something to me. He says, you can't see my face and live. I want to see your glory. And the Lord said, here, here's a place. And it's by me. Here's a place. God's made a place for you to retreat to. To be in his glorious presence. That, he said, here's a place and it's by me. God has made you a place by him. So that you can experience him. He says, here is a place by me and you shall stand on a rock. Look at that. Here's a place. Your father, father says to you, he says to you and me, here's a place and it's by me. Now, stand on the rock. What's that mean? That's Jesus to me and you, isn't it? That's the truth of the Bible. That's our covenant. The word of God, we stand on the rock. Amen. He says, here's a place, and it's by me. Standing on the rock. Standing on the rock. I go to the rock. Amen. It says, so it shall be that while my glory passes by, that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand and, and, and while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. And I just, I just, when I saw that, I, I've read this many times, but when I saw that, he said, it's my glory. Here's my goodness. You can't see my face, but here's a place, and it's right by me, and you're standing on a rock. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, feel that. Think of that. He says to you, to me, here's a place. And it's by me. Yeah, I know you want more of me. You can't handle all of me yet. But here's a place. And it's by me. And stand on the rock. And when you do, I'll make sure that you see something. And he said, I'll cover you up. And when I get past you, I'll let you see my back. Friends, just to think about what, how glorious God is, that just to see his back is all you can possibly handle. Amen. I could just see his back is all I can handle because, because he's so glorious, so perfect, so wonderful. So righteous, amen, hallelujah, so holy. Here's a place by me. God makes a place for us by him where we stand on the rock. He says, then my glory will pass by, and then he says, I will cover you with my hand. All these little pieces in these verses. He says, my goodness, my glory, uh, you can't see my face, but here's a place, and it's by me. And you're standing on the rock. And then when I'm going by, I put my, I cover you with my hand. Cover you with my hand. Wow. Friends, if you get hungry for God. You just don't know how wonderful it's going to be. When you get so hungry after him that he says, here I am. Here I am. Here's a place by me. And friends, every day of your life when you're praying and seeking him and you're in the word of God, he's saying to you, my child, here's a place. And it's by me. And stand on the rock. And I'll put my hand on you. Isn't that wonderful? And then you'll see some, a piece of my glory. Whoa. I could just imagine that being your prayer time tomorrow. Lord, here I am. I want to see your face. I want to see your glory. He says, you can't see all of it. I'll give you a little piece, but here it is. Here's a place, my child. He's telling you tomorrow in your prayer time, here's a place, my child, and it's by me. Amen. And he says, and you stand on the rock, and my hand will be upon you. And I'll let you see it just enough to get you all excited and know you, can, you can't lose and you can't quit. And that there's great days ahead for you. Amen. Here I am. And he says, I'll show you my back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, please. Glory portions. His glory and portions. His goodness. 
comes in doses. Progressive revelation, increasing experience, the goodness of God. We can't handle all his glory in this flesh, and we can't appreciate all his goodness in one experience. That glory and that goodness, the glory and the goodness. I can't experience all of his glory in this flesh, and I can't appreciate all his goodness in one experience. I keep having to come back for more taste of him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Taste and see, taste and see. Come and taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. So we, I, th- I think, of, think of that, friends. I can't have all his glory to see it in my flesh, and I can't appreciate all his goodness. In one experience. And if if my appreciating his goodness is going to lead me to an experience of his glory, then I got to keep on looking for his goodness and find ways to talk about it. You know, when those angels are are flying around the throne and they got all those eyeballs all over them and they're singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And they're going around the throne of God, just circling the throne and just looking at him, looking at him, looking at him with all those eyeballs because there's always more to see about the goodness and greatness of God. Amen. And friends, I pray that you put some of your spiritual eyeballs on God and look at him. Amen. So, declare his goodness and see his glory. If his goodness is his glory, then I want you and me to declare his goodness so that we can see his glory. I want to see his glory, so I better start declaring his goodness. Amen. If those two go together there. And it says here, hallelujah, the Lord, the Lord is merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, Exodus 34, 6. You know, if I say these things, Father, you're the Lord, you're the Lord God, you're merciful, you're gracious, you're long-suffering, you're abounding in goodness and truth, amen. I'm going to make an atmosphere whereby his glory can come and fill the room where I'm at, amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever, First Chronicles 16, 34. And the next one says, good and upright is the Lord, Psalm 25, 8. So he's good, his mercy endures. Father, you're good and your mercy endures forever, hallelujah. Oh, and then I say, good and upright are you, Lord. I am the I am, the L-O-R-D, you're my Lord. And they sang responsibly, here's a group setting of worship. They sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to the Lord. For he is good. This is what they said. We're giving thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever toward Israel. I'm going to say, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures to, uh, to, to forever toward me and your people and all of us that have covenant with you. Father God, whether it's Israel or the believers in Christ, amen, in Jesus' name. And they sing, and, and I'm going to sing of the goodness of the Lord. I'm going to sing of the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, 6. God, your goodness and your mercy, they follow me all the days of my life, and I'm going to dwell in your house forever. Amen. Praise God. Next, please. Lord, I'm going to keep on talking about your goodness because I want to see your glory. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Psalm 145, 9. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, which comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there's no variation or shadow of turning. James 1, 17. Father, I thank you that every good gift comes from you. Every perfect gift comes through you, from you, O God. And you're the Father of lights, and you don't change. You're unchangeable. You're always there. You're always reliable. You'll never go back on your word. He says, then... Uh, this next portion out of Matthew seven eleven, If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Father, I thank you that you're good because you give me good things because you're my daddy. You're my father. You care about me. You watch over me in Jesus' name. And he goes on to say, Psalm 27, 13, I would have lost heart except that I would be- believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm not just waiting till heaven here in this life as I go about my daily business, as I'm in home, at home with my family, on the job, wherever. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen? I'm going to see God here in the house. Amen? In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And uh, praise God. And then the next one, please. He said, I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. So I'm going to meditate on your glorious splendor. 
your majesty, your wondrous works, and we're going to speak of the might of your uh, awesome works and acts, amen, and I will declare your greatness, they shall utter the memory of your great goodness, they shall sing of your righteousness, Psalm 145, 5 through 7, I'm going to sing about his goodness, talk about his goodness so his glory shows up, amen, because I need him, need more of him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste, taste him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Psalm 34, 8. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. Oh, thank God for his goodness. Amen for his goodness. For your goodness, oh God, in Jesus' name. Declare his goodness. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes, Psalm 119, 68. You also have your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst, Nehemiah 9, 20. Psalm 69, 16 says, Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me according to your, the multitude of your tender mercies. And then last one, Nahum 1, 7, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows them to trust in him. Next, please. So what are we going to do? We're going to praise him. Come on, everybody. Let's just go ahead and praise him. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise Jesus, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Hallelujah. If you want to stand to your feet, you can. You can sit, stand, walk, run around the aisles or whatever you want to do. But let's give him glory. Let's give him praise. Lord, we give you praise. I declare your glory, Lord God. We declare your glory and look for your glorious presence. Oh, we give you praise and we give you praise and we give you praise. We talk about your goodness, your goodness, your goodness. Lord, so show your glory. Show me your glory. Show us your glory show us your glory because we know you're the good god oh the great god the wonderful father amen the holy one holy one holy 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 is the lord god almighty hallelujah praise god he reigns omnipotent forever and ever amen yes you Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Lord, we're looking for you to come. We want to see you, Jesus. We're looking for your return. We're looking for you to catch us away. Lord, we're looking that between now and then we're going to live for you with all of our hearts. But, Lord, we look for that day when I see your face, when I see your face, when I see your glory. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. That's the day I'm living for, Lord. I'm living for another day. I'm living for today, but I'm living for another day when there's no barriers between me and seeing him in all his greatness and glory. He's a good God, a great God, a wonderful God. In Jesus' name, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. God, you are so good. God is so good. Amen. 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 God, you're so good. In Jesus' name, the glory fills the house. In Jesus' name. Friends, if you need God to touch your life today, I want you to let me know. Come on up and let us pray for you. I love you. And in Jesus' name, if you need a touch from God, maybe you want to come up and just, just seek his face around this altar. Put your hands up in the air and love and worship God. If you need anything, make sure you come on up. In Jesus' name, God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good, is so good to me. I love him so, I love him so. I love him so. I love him so. He's so good to me. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Oh, bless him, bless him, bless him, Lord God. Jesus is Lord. He is Lord to me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And God is so good. One more time. God is so good. God is so 